Good evening. Welcome to our Center Grove eighth grade scheduling night as we kick off your students for their freshman year. I'm Trisha Ferguson. I'm one of the assistant principals here at Center Grove. And um, I have the pleasure of working with our guidance department and creating both the student and teacher schedules for um, everyone that's around here. So we're going to be talking tonight about all kinds of interesting things. Um, the information can sometimes be a little overwhelming because there's so much of it and school has changed so much since those of us who are parents of eighth graders um, were in school. The main thing to remember tonight is there's more than one right answer. There's more than one path that your student can take to get through high school and have a great experience. And we're all here to help. I have an eighth grader myself that we're um, in the same shoes that you all are and trying to figure out what's the best choice for some of our classes. Um, so if you ever have any questions, know that you're among friends um, and please feel free to reach out to me or some of the other people I'm gonna introduce you to in a minute. Um, with any questions that you have. We also tonight have a question and answer feature on the Zoom. So if you notice at the bottom of the screen, there is a Q&A. We have some of our amazing guidance counselors who will be answering your questions as they come up. And then at the end of the evening, we're gonna have a question and answer segment where they're gonna take questions that have come up repeatedly and ask us live, and then we'll be answering those again. So without further ado, I'd also like to introduce our most amazing Director of Guidance, Megan Krukemeyer, and she is gonna be doing the presentation with me this evening. In addition, under the Q&A section, we have three of our amazing counselors, Kelly McCary, Stephanie Paul, and Scott Stinzinger are all here to be manning your questions. Our agenda for this evening and looking at that slide that you see, the class of 2025, that is still kind of freaking me out a little bit that we're all the way there. Okay, our agenda for this evening, we're gonna do some interjections. We're gonna talk about general, general scheduling information, what Global Campus is. We're gonna talk about what the Indiana um, college core is and all kinds of other information about diploma types and things that you're going to want to know. Our administrative staff, we are led by Dr. Jeff Henderson, and then we have four assistant principals that you can see listed there in addition to two deans. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Krukemeyer to introduce her guidance staff. Hello, my name is Megan Kruckemeyer and I am the Director of Guidance here at the high school. Um, I also want to introduce the counseling staff. We have um, some new additions to the team, so that's great. We have Scott Stenzinger, um, Mrs. Amanda Buck, Mrs. Stephanie Paul, Mr. Daniel Weems, Mrs. Kelly McCary, Mrs. Lindsay Miller, Mrs. Angela Chaplin, Miss Abby Doyle is our social worker. We have Ms. Fisher, who is our guidance secretary. Um, so if you call and have questions, she's probably the one that answers them for you. And we also have Mrs. Karen Cornett, who is our registrar. Um, we are all divided up by alphabet. So next year, this is what the alphabet will be. So you um, can kind of see who your counselor is gonna be for next year for your eighth grade student. All right, so we're just gonna kind of roll right into the information um, for tonight and everything that you need to know about high school. The most important thing is how are we going to graduate? So there are different diploma types that Indiana offers. We have the core 40 diploma, which requires 40, 40 credits, all from different areas and subject areas. We have the core 40 with academic honors. Um, side note for this one, you do not have to actually take an honors course in order to earn this diploma. So that is one of um, the fun facts for tonight. There are different um, or additional requirements that you have to have in order to earn the academic honors diploma. Um, and your counselor, when we meet one-on-one -on -one with the eighth grade students after spring break, we will be able to talk to them about the different diploma types and depending on what their aspirations are, which diploma would fit best for them. Um, Core 40 with technical honors is also an extra, is a diploma that requires extra requirements. 
Um, for every diploma, you have to have at least 40 credits. Um, and then, like I said, we have additional requirements. So 47 are required for the academic honors diploma as well. Um, students sometimes feel like there's not enough time to get all of the requirements in because it seems like a really big number um, when you think about the daily um, schedule at Center Grove. Students have the opportunity to actually earn 56 credits just by being a standard student at the high school and that's not even including summer school opportunities. Um, so there's plenty of time to take the classes that you want and also take the classes that you need. Um, starting with the class of 2023, so you guys obviously are the class of 2025, so this would incorporate your graduation requirements. Um, class of 2023 and below um, or and beyond, they have to have a graduation pathway in order to graduate from high school. Um, there are a number of different ways that students can um, obtain this graduation pathway, whether it's academic honors diploma or dual credit or a certification. Um, that's just a couple of the options that you have. Um, they will have to have one of these in order to graduate high school. When your student meets with their guide or their school counselor, we will be able to kind of get a path going for the students in order to know what each specific student will need in order to earn this pathway. Like I said, it's very different for every student. Um, so as they move through high school, this can change and the, um, the different ways to earn this will also change. There is a link on this slide um, and it kind of tells you exactly what each student will need to get and the different ways that they can obtain this. Okay, so what are the classes that your students are going to actually take? Next week, uh, myself and Mrs. Crookemeyer and Mrs. Tracy McMahon, who is our assistant principal who works with our early college program, are going to be visiting each of the middle schools and we're gonna be taking your students' recommendation form um, to them. At that time, we'll go through with the students um, some vocabulary that they're going to need to know for high school, explaining what credits are, explaining how the high school is different than the middle school, how you have to complete a class successfully with a passing grade in order to earn the credit and move on. And when your student comes home with that form, there is going to be a label that is pre-printed on it that has the recommendations that we have gone through and recommended for your student. Those recommendations are based on um, a lot of information. We take into account the students' classes that they've been taking in middle school, the grades that they're earning in those classes, their NWEA scores, their COGAT score, and their success at passing the ISTEP or ILEARN um, in the years that we've had um, it previously. This year, we didn't look so much at ISTEP because the last complete ISTEP that we had was in their sixth grade year. So we weighted the other um, pieces of data a little higher to make up for that. And we also look at the middle school teacher's recommendations. So we fill out what we think is the most appropriate thing for your students to take. We send it back to the middle school so they can take a double look at it. And then they have the opportunity to tell us information um, that maybe there's something we didn't know that they think a student might be successful or maybe not be as successful in an honors class. And then that's how we come up with the classes we recommend for your students to take. Your student is going to have a math, an English, a science, a social studies, and potentially a world language class on that label. Those are the courses that we think your student is gonna be most successful at. Keeping in mind what Mrs. Crookemeyer already told us that a student can get an academic honors diploma and just take regular classes because the academic honors diploma is based on the number of courses and the specific types of courses, not necessarily that everything your stu student took was honors. If your student applied to the early college program and they have been admitted, they will get an early college form that's going to look a little different than the other students because that program is very prescribed in the classes that it takes. And if they're an early college student and they get two 
different forms. That means your student has qualified for four or more honors classes in addition to being accepted into early college. And we do that to make sure that our early college kids have the best um, information available to make a decision as far as which path they wanna take. If a student was not recommended for a specific class, let's say for example that your student loves history and they weren't recommended to take honors or AP world history, we have the opportunity for you to appeal that recommendation and there is a link that is live in this um, presentation and we will also be sending out to parents that you can appeal to Dr. Henderson that your student would like to take a different course. If your student is recommended for an honors class and you don't necessarily think that that's the best choice for them, you don't have to take the honors version. Those are the maximum classes um, that your students can take, but you can always choose to go down to regular algebra one or regular biology. Which brings us to the next question that we get a lot. How many honors classes should my student take? And that is one of those questions that everyone always loves our answer. The answer is it just depends on your student. One of the important things about high school is to make sure that your student has a well-rounded experience. And what we mean by that is we want them to enjoy these years. We want them to have a good cross-section of academics, but also clubs, uh, maybe music, sports, all kinds of different things for them to really start to mature and become part of a team, become part of a group, and really get to understand how they work with people. So if your student is um, very good, naturally gifted in an area, that's always a great thing for them to take the honors version. Um, if your student is heavily involved in maybe a travel sport, in team sport, maybe they take private lessons for music. Um, it, it's okay if they don't take everything honors. There's lots of opportunities here and we wanna make sure that once again, we have a really well-rounded student. And keeping in mind, as I said before, there is more than one right answer. There's gonna be more than one right college for your student to go to. There's gonna be more than one right activity that they're gonna um, be very successful in. And just keep in mind that all of the different paths that we have that your student can take are all going to take them to graduation and they're all going to take them to a variety of opportunities for them. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the course request form that's going to be coming home um, with your student. Like Mrs. Ferguson said, um, Mrs. Ferguson, myself, Mrs. McMahon, and Ms. Chaplin will be going to the two different middle schools and we are going to be given or giving your student their actual scheduling form with that label on it that Mrs. Ferguson was talking about um, with the recommendations for your student's ninth grade year. We are going to be at Middle School North on March the 9th and March the 10th, we're gonna be at Middle School Central. So there are required courses that the, every freshman has to take. The level in which they take that course is up to the recommendation and then up to what the student is comfortable with. So every student will take English nine in some level, whether that's honors or regular. They will take a math course, a science course, social studies. They will take key, Keystone and PE. Keystone will go first semester and then PE will, become, will go second semester. Um, and then if they are recommended, they can do foreign language um, and that is recommended if they're college bound and if they can do well in it. If your student is not recommended for world language as a freshman, that is totally fine. They will have plenty of time in order to pick up a world language in order to earn the academic honors diploma if they choose to do so. Just a quick overview of the scheduling. Um, each student is going to choose seven courses for each semester. So we will schedule every student with 14 credit hours. 
Um, we will automatically add a study hall so the students do not need to put that on their form. We mass add those once we do the we get the entire schedule put together. Um, it is really smart to have at least four college prep courses or core courses, preferably five, just to keep the rigor going in their schedule and to keep them doing the core subjects every single year. We ask that every student also chooses alternate courses because sometimes um, we will put a course on there that for an elective that a student that a handful of students want, but it's not quite enough to fill a section. And so sometimes we'll have to remove that from the master schedule. And it's just easier if we have a backup plan for those students um, so that if that happens, then we can go ahead and put their choice, their second choice in there. Most of the time we will have a conversation with the student before we do that, but it's still nice to have that on the form just so that we can see it and talk to them about it when we meet with them. You will fill out the scheduling form with requested ninth grade courses. Like Mrs. Ferguson said, there will be a um, label on there that will tell the courses that they are recommended for, but there will be some places in there where they can choose their electives that they want to take. Um, so they do have some choice in that. Once you have completed your scheduling form and you've put your elective choices on there, you will turn in your course selection form to your middle school counselor. After they are all collected by the middle schools, then Mrs. Ferguson or myself will go and pick them up. But please make sure that those get turned into each of your middle schools. Please and thank you. This is what the form will look like. We choose the color pink for the eighth grade forms. So depending on if you're early college or not, it will be a, um, a different shade of pink. Um, on here, it has all the core classes and in that, that top box, the recommendation label will be. Then underneath, you will see the elective choices. Go ahead and have your student fill out all the elective choices that they would like or be interested in. Depending on what courses they're recommended for, they may or may not have room for all of them. So it's very important that they put them in there, preferably in order if possible. So when we start meeting with the students, um, like we've talked about the kind of the process, we will go over um, Mrs. Ferguson, Mrs. McMahon, Ms. Chaplin and myself, and we will talk to your student about all the things that we're talking about now. And we'll also go into a little more in depth about the different things. Um, then they will have time to work on their schedule and turn in their course request forms. And then after spring break, all of the counselors from the high school will go to each middle school and we will spend an entire day going through and meeting our freshmen or our to be freshmen for that middle school. We will have one on one meetings with them. It usually ranges about five minutes per kid, which doesn't seem like a lot, but we we cover a lot of ground in that time. Um, it's nice for them to see our faces. It's nice for us to have a quick conversation, write down little notes, you know, as we meet with them. And then we make sure that all of the courses that they want are put into Skyward um, so that they are all set for the next school year. After that meeting, we sometimes get students that maybe change their mind and they want to either go to a regular level course instead of an honors, or that maybe they've decided they want nutrition class instead of an art class, whatever it may be. The deadline to make any of those changes is May 1st. After that, we're pretty hard about not letting kids change their schedule. So it's important for them to really think about it and talk it over and make sure that they are all set by May 1st. Um, if they do feel like they, they must come out of a class, there becomes a process at that point. Um, and if we get there, then we'll walk your, your child through that process. But May 1st is an important deadline for you all to, to remember. Okay, we do have at Center Grove the opportunity to take summer courses. Each year between um, the grade levels, there's the opportunity for some different courses. As an incoming freshman, 
there's really just two choices. One is biology and the other is Keystone. Um, as I was looking through some of our question and answers, there's been lots of questions about what is Keystone? Um, so if you were thinking it and didn't ask it, Keystone is an introduction to college and careers class that every freshman at Center Grove High School takes that um, introduces them to some career inventories, some interest inventories to kind of help them develop their four-year plan for high school, kind of gets them thinking about what they're going to do afterwards if they're interested in maybe a two or four-year college or another type of post-secondary opportunity. It also allows them to do some things to get to know Center Grove High School and the different departments and teachers. So that is the class um, that everyone takes. You can take it over the summer. It's a one semester class unless you are an early college student. If you're an early college student, that will be your very first dual credit class and those are not offered in summer school. Um, the biology class is a great class. It's very intensive and you're gonna be spending some work on it. Um, but if that's something that you're interested in, please go ahead and apply. Throughout your course at Center Grove, there are global campus opportunities, not just for the summer, but for during the school year as well. And those opportunities are gonna come up more as juniors and seniors, but we wanna go ahead and give you some ideas about what global campus is. Global Campus is an online curriculum that is created by Center Grove teachers. So it is not a canned curriculum that we purchased from somebody else. It is developed by our very own teachers and it follows along more closely with the content that a student would be getting if they were doing it in person. Um, some of the characteristics that we think are successful for students um, to have to be in a Global Campus class um, they need to, or some of the opportunities, our classes have more um, projects, they have more real life opportunities, they provide meaningful relationships, um, the remote takes out some barriers that we found in education um, for some students. And over the last year, as we've moved to having a virtual school also, the global campus format has really become the basis for a lot of our own virtual school. Um, we have Mrs. Jennifer Perkins, who is one of our assistant principals, who is in charge of global campus, and Mr. Sam Fritz, who is our e-learning coordinator. So those people are always available to help you um, navigate what that process might look. If a student is interested, they need to make sure that they're self-motivated. They need to have a C and above in traditional classroom. Um, we also want to make sure that they have a very dependable Wi-Fi at home and that they have some experience with Canvas. Some of the other things that have are opportunities for our students that we just want to touch base on tonight. Um, and as, as we said before, some of this stuff is, can be really overwhelming and we know there's lots of opportunities. Um, in the past, we have had lots of dual credit opportunities for students. Um, but a few years ago, the state of Indiana put together kind of a value meal, so to speak, of some of the dual credit opportunities that are combined with our AP opportunities. And they used to call it the STGEC, um, which was not a good acronym for anybody to remember. So this year they've changed it to the Indiana College Corps. And basically this is your student's freshman year of college that they can earn while they're in high school. So the student can either take a dual credit class or an AP class to fulfill these credit hours and it ends up equaling 30 credit hours, which is the average class load that a student would take as a freshman at one of our state universities. Um, this certificate transfers to any public Indiana university. Um, years ago, if you went to IU and started your education and then you decided that you wanted to transfer to Ball State or Purdue, most of your classes would probably end up being elective. So that meant that you were going to have to retake things and more importantly, repay for them. So several years ago, the Indiana State Legislature got together and said, if you are in Indiana school, um, in higher education, and you receive state funding, then you got to play nicely. And so those schools now are required to accept each other's credits. And that's what allows us to put this 30 credit hour um, item together. It is a little bit of everything. Um, there's a math component, science components, English, 
um, the arts, all kinds of things. So if your student is recommended for honors and AP classes, this is something that you might want to go ahead and check out. This is an alternative to a student doing their entire high school career through early college. So if you're a student who is trying to decide if you would like to do early college and you've also been recommended for four classes that are all AP and honors, then I would suggest that you maybe have a conversation with your counselor or Mrs. McMahon, or I'm happy to, to talk with you as well about those. If this is something that your student is interested in, we'll just make sure that they mention that to their counselor when they talk to. And most of the classes that they'll need for this to get are going to be in their junior and senior class. Um, what they would be needing to take now are those honors classes to get them prepared to be successful in those AP classes. One of the things that I am super excited about that is brand new for the class of 2025 is our Advanced Manufacturing Associates degree. And this is something that has been a joint effort between the schools in Johnson County and some of our amazing business partners. The idea here is that it's like our early college model where students will graduate with an associate's degree, but instead of being a general studies associate's degree, this associate's degree is specific in manufacturing. We have created a whole um, program that is a combination of high school classes to get their regular diploma. And it has, instead of using Vincennes, it uses Ivy Tech for our um, education partner. And when the students graduate, they would have what they need for that associate's degree in advanced manufacturing. And they would, along the way, have been picked up by one of our industry partners. And if they successfully complete this associate's degree pro program, then they will be assured a job at one of our industry partners. Currently, our industry partners are Anderson Hauser, Cummins, NSK, um, I just forgot one, um, and Caterpillar. We are also looking at some other industry partners that we predict will be coming along the way as this program um, grows. This is also a program where students would be doing summer jobs um, where they would get to work for 15 hours a week in addition to getting um, credit for the experience and getting paid um, 17 to $18 an hour. So we're real excited about this program. Um, this program would also roll into a bachelor's degree program in engineering at Indiana State. So it isn't that they would have to stop and go to work with this program. Uh, they could, but they could also roll that into an engineering program. For a freshman, if they're interested in this, the best thing that they can do is enroll in our manufacturing classes. And then we will be doing an application process um, at the end of their first semester. Okay, important dates, Mrs. Scruckmeyer. All right, so we've thrown a whole lot of information at you. And so now you guys need to know when everything is going to start coming together. So on March 12th, the scheduling forms are due to the middle school counselors. Um, again, you guys will work with your student, pick the classes, get the electives together. If there's questions, um, feel free to ask. The middle school counselors are also able to answer some questions as well. Um, like we've also said, we will be in the building next week um, to talk to the students. So if they have questions then, that would be a great time to ask them. On March 19th, if you want to change a recommendation from the label that was sent um, that is on the scheduling form, you can click that link where it says form in red and that will take you to our appeals sheet. It is not open right now so you guys can go there and you can see where it will be but it's not accepting any, um, any information yet because you guys haven't received the labels yet. Once you get those, if you think that your student should have been recommended for an honors class for whatever reason, you would fill that out. And then, um, like Mrs. Ferguson said, Dr. Henderson will go through and he will make the final decision. And then we will let um, the students know where we fall with that appeal process. May 1st, any changes need to be submitted to the high school as far as your schedule is concerned. Um, in July, we have a freshman orientation that's typically during the day, um, and then registration rolls over to that evening. Um, we don't have any dates on here yet because as you guys are aware, 
there are things that are changing day to day. So as soon as we have any information about the freshman orientation or about registration, we will be sure to send that out um, as soon as we know something. August 2nd is going to be our freshman Froyo night. Um, students and their families are invited to come um, to the high school and have Ellis frozen yogurt, walk around the building, kind of see where your classes may be, um, to kind of ease the, the nervousness of coming into the school with all of the students. So this is a great night for your family to take advantage of. Um, again, we plan to do this um, if conditions allow and if you know things are kind of on the upward trend that we're seeing at this point. As we talk about all the different options, um, the best advice that we can give you is to have your student get involved with something. Um, this eighth grade class is the biggest class that Center Grove has ever had. And we're super excited about all the opportunities that having such a big class can bring. Um, but we want to encourage you to make sure that they get involved in something, whether that's a club. Um, we have over 30 different clubs that in a typical year meet. We have everything from ping pong to Riley kids to all kinds of, of different things that hopefully will um, meet their interest. If there's something that they want to do, but we don't have a club, um, if they can find some people that are also interested and a sponsor, then we um, are constantly switching clubs and mm -hmm. adding more. Um, we have over 15 different bands, choirs, and orchestras, um, and all kinds, um, over 20 athletic teams. So there's all kinds of opportunities for your students to get involved. Uh, making a connection in high school is one of the most important things that your student can do. Um, as you go through this process to kind of navigate the different classes that we have, different clubs, different activities, we invite you to check out our guidance website. You can get to that directly from the Center Grove High School website. Um, on the guidance website, there is a link to our academic guide, which tells you about all of the classes that we offer here at Center Grove High School. Um, if a student has a question about what an elective is like or what the expectations are, or what you'll be studying in a certain class, this academic guide is very helpful. It gives them a detailed description as to what the class um, is, the prereqs that there are, and what grade level you can take. Um, applications for some of the electives are also on this website. So if your student is interested in doing media arts or student pubs, that will be a requirement to complete the application in order to go into that class. And you can find that by using the, the link on this um, slide and it will take you right there and you guys can check it out. You can also see our contact information on there. Um, this PowerPoint will be linked directly under the class of 2025. And so you can go back and you can watch this again, or if a friend of yours wasn't able to come tonight, they can access it there as well. Um, again, any type of information that we want to push out, we put on our website, and then we also push it out in the newsletter. And since you guys are eighth grade um, families, you don't have access to it as far as us sending it to you via email every Friday, but we do post it on the website. So you are welcome to see what kind of opportunities are available for high school students. Um, so that will also be another great resource for you to start getting geared up to get connected at Center Grove High School. Okay, I've been kind of watching the Q&A going on as um, you guys have been listening to our presentation. Um, thank you so much for so many great questions. Our counselors are um, busy answering those and we will not finish until we have all of your questions answered. Um, but at this time, um, counselors, do you see something that has been coming up frequently that maybe we need to answer live? Perfect. Um, the question is, what will be happening with our virtual students? So they will be receiving a PDF um, email document that has their um, course requests just like they would um, if they were in person. And we will also be videotaping the presentations that we're going to be giving at the middle schools, and they'll have access to those as well. Um, we anticipate that those will be out uh, March 8th or ninth um, in the same time frame that we will be visiting the in-person students. 
any other questions? Will their deadline be the same too? Um, the deadline will be the same. Um, if there's something that happens, and these are guidelines that because we have to have some type of a date to keep the scheduling process going. But of course, if you have concerns or, or don't know what to pick, um, please let us know. The other thing to keep in mind is that as a freshman, the opportunities for electives are not nearly as large as they are for um, a, a student as they go through the curriculum. Um, one of the questions that I did see was asking about what the benefit of taking summer school is. Um, there's kind of a mixed verdict on that. We have plenty of opportunities for our kids during the course of their time here to get all their credits in. And if you have a really involved student, um, there's really no reason for them to take a summer school class. Um, if you have a student that wants to squeeze in something, if you have a student that's interested in being a foreign exchange student later, they might be. If you have a student that's interested in doubling up on something, let's say maybe they want to get to AP Calculus BC and they want to go ahead and take two math classes, then that is somebody who might want to double up. If you have a student that wants to be in Project Lead the Way, um, on our biomed or our engineering program, biology might be good to get out of the way so that they have an extra slot in their um, schedule, but it's not something that they have to take. Um, another question that I saw was what happens if your student was recommended, um, was in biology honors, but not in algebra honors. Um, so if you, you can't move up, um, to chemistry without algebra. So that kind of gets a little weird sometimes that they already have biology under their belt. They could skip a year of science, but they could also take um, earth space science. They could also take Project Lead the Way um, Biomed. And if they have any idea that they wanna do anything in the medical field, our Project Lead the Way program with Biomed is an awesome program. So I would highly encourage any of you that have a student who are interested in any type of medical field to look at our Project Lead the Way. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the questions um, that's sitting out there still is, will you explain what Project Lead the Way is? Um, it is a curriculum that is put out by um, Project Lead the Way. And it ha we have engineering here at the high school, and we also have the biomedical sciences. So like Mrs. Ferguson said, if your student has any interest at all in the medical field, we absolutely recommend that they get into Project Lead the Way for the biomedical sciences. Um, our engineering um, Project Lead the Way is also really great and it will take the kids through all four years if they choose to all dual credit opportunities great exposure to engineering um, and if that is what they're wanting to go into so cannot say enough good things about both of those programs if you have specific questions about those um, please let us know and then we can also put you in contact with the teachers that that run the programs and they can share their love for it as well one of the other questions I see is about, can your student be an early college student and stay virtual? The answer to that one is no. Most of um, the, the kids in early college have a small cohort feeling that really the culture of that program is important. And also the focus is that a student can get an associate's degree. So many of their classes are dual credit and that isn't something that we can offer online for them. Another question I see is, um, I'm sorry, just lost it. Oh, our, my student has been struggling this year. How do we, do we take into account um, their whole um, resume of classes rather than just this year? And that would be, yes, we do. One of the things that we rely he heavily on is that past standardized score data and also the teacher recommendations. So if your student has struggled a little bit this year, but this is the first year that we've seen those grades fall and they still have um, some of the other data, then they would be recommended for those classes. The other thing to keep in mind is with the exception of math, even if a student isn't in, let's say they're recommended for English nine this year, and not honors, and they do really well in English 9, they can bump up back to English 10 honors as a sophomore. Um, the, only, the only content that that's really hard in is math. So we try to make sure that we're offering them um, as rigorous of a curriculum as, as they're ready for. Counselors, do you see anything else we need to answer?
Yes, you can be in early college and take the Project Lead the Way classes. One of the questions is, did we look at um, grades to put students in their kids in the recommendations um, and that's a good question. The scores that we used were the ones from the, the end semester scores. So we didn't look currently at Skyward for where they are right now. We looked at that end of the first semester um, for their grades. And once again, we took their semester grades. We took COGAT. We waited. We're a little bit behind on the process this year because we wanted to make sure we got their winter NWA score to have the most updated data that we could. So we used the fall and winter NWEA, um, COGAT, their courses that they're taking, teacher recommendations, and their grades. Um, two questions that I want to make sure are answered from here. Someone asked, can you tell me what dual credit is? And I think Mr. Stenzinger answered that person directly, but it's a great question. So dual credit is when your student has the opportunity to sit in a high school course by a high school teacher and also earn dual credit through um, either Ivy Tech, Vincennes, UND, um, and IU, we also have dual credit through. Um, as the students get older, we will have more opportunities for dual credit for the students that qualify. Um, so the short of it is that dual credit, you earn high school credit and also have the opportunity to earn college credit at the exact same time. Um, I also saw a question about, can you get into AP courses without being in the honors in an honors course? That question is yes. However, you have to have recommendations um, from the teacher to put you into an AP course. So you have to be high achieving, you have to be doing well in that subject area in order to be considered for an AP course. Most of the time that doesn't happen until they get older. Um, once we kind of see their trend in that, that core subject area in order to go into the AP course. Um, but yes, the answer is yes, you can. There's a question about world language. Um, world language this year has been really difficult for students, especially um, if they were in a virtual program. One of the things that I would say is, if in doubt, have your student retake the first year of a foreign language, because that's gonna set them up better for taking years two and three. One of the, the big reasons that students take our foreign languages is one, to get their academic honors diploma, which you need three years of one language. So even if they start as a freshman, they can take it as a freshman, sophomore, and junior and be fine with that. Or a student can take two years of two different languages. So even if they start fresh with a first year language, they are fine to get that all done in high school. Um, but that first year foreign language is so important. We wanna make sure that they get the best possible foundation that they can in that. So I would highly recommend if they're struggling in that foreign language or missed out on part of a semester to most definitely try to take that again as a um, freshman in the first year of whichever language they want. Do you know, are we posting the questions after? Um, good question. Will we be posting the questions? We will do a transcript of the questions of anything that isn't um, brought up tonight that we're not answering live. And that might be a little bit later than the actual recorded version, but we'll make sure in the next few days that you do have access to that. Counselors, any other questions you see that we need to answer live? Yes. Mm -hmm. And once again, this presentation will be available um, for you to watch again um, by tomorrow. Um, I, I see a question with, does Project Lead the Way have a similar small group like early college does? Um, I would say it's a smaller group than even early college. And those kids um, it's not specifically a cohort in that they take all the same, they have all the same teachers for all their classes, but they do um, 
take all of, they do have the same teacher for each of their project lead the way classes as a freshman. Um, we have a total, I think of three different teachers that teach project lead the way, um, but they do kind of end up taking um, a lot of the same courses with each other because the way their schedule works. Lots of project lead the way questions. Mm -hmm. Um, I also see a good question. Uh, what is the difference between an academic honors diploma and a technical honors diploma? Uh, good question. The academic honors diploma is going to be more about getting the um, more academic classes here at the high school. The technical honors program is something that our students are probably going to um, fulfill, fulfill the requirements with at C9. Um, for those of you that are not aware, C9 is our vocational program that is a cohort from the Johnson County Schools and a couple of Marion County Schools. Um, it's a great program to get kids job skills and ready to go. Um, there's different certifications that they can obtain while they're in high school um, so that they're very much job ready or ready to move on to um, a post-secondary opportunity with work or furthering their educations. We have everything from cosmetology to to culinary, um, police, fire, EMT, um, the students can get their LPN, all kinds of great programs. C9 typically starts when you're a junior and a senior. And um, as we get into their sophomore year, your students will also have the opportunity to take a field trip to C9 to check out all the great programs that they have there. So um, definitely something to keep your eye on as they go into their sophomore and junior years. Um, see a question about our recommendations for the advanced manufacturing. What we're going to do is we would recommend that right now a student just take a manufacturing class and then next year we'll be looking at how they did in all of their courses um, this year and making recommendations on if we think that they are a good fit for the associate's degree. The thing to keep in mind is that it is a college program. So we're going to need to make sure that they can um, be academically prepared for those classes. Um, we're super excited about this program. It is also a joint effort with the other county schools. Um, you'll often hear us refer to it as AMP, the Advanced Manufacturing Project. And um, we're super um, positive about the opportunities that that can provide for our students. Um. We got a question about when do we decide if they need to accept their credit from middle school to high school for biology, foreign language? Um, when do they have to know if they want to keep that grade or not? Um, and that's a great question. As an incoming freshman, you might come to us with some courses on your transcript that are already for high school credit. And that would be any of your Spanish, French, um, German, or Chinese one classes, or it could be could be biology or algebra one as well. Um, at the, we will be sending you a letter um, asking you if you want to accept the grade that you have in that credit. And usually that goes out in May, um, the beginning of May. So you might not 100% have the grade to that class, but at that point you should have an idea of how well it's going. Um, if you decide that you don't wanna take that class, um, and you don't want that grade on your transcript, that's fine. You can just go ahead and make sure that you schedule that for the freshman year. Um, got a question, are our early college students still eligible for honors art? And does the early college begin when they enter 11th and 12th grades? It starts when they're a freshman. Um, they are in uh, classes together and they absolutely can take honors art. Um, we have some dual credit art classes that they can take and they also are eligible to take the AP art classes as well. One of the things with our early college students is they still have the opportunity to participate in all kinds of electives. Um, my, my oldest student who is now a senior in college, he was more AP honors. My middle child, who is a junior here at the high school, she is an early college student, um, but she's also been in show choir all three years of high school and has um, been able to take 
other classes as well outside of early college. She's also been taking accounting um, and some business classes. So there's still lots of room in early college schedules for those electives. Um, question of when can a student take physics? Um, that's a good one. Um, if you're me, never. Um, but for those of you that think that sounds like a good thing to do, and if you're sciencey, absolutely. Um, they can take that typically as a junior. If you have a student who has already taken biology, then the natural progression would be um, biology, chemistry then as a freshman, and then physics. Um, we do have varying degrees of physics. Um, as far as we've got some AP physics, we've got res regular physics, we've got honors physics. Um, so based on your students' recommendations, um, we'll get them in the right, right physics class. The other thing moving forward that we didn't cover tonight is once your student is already a high school student, when we do the scheduling process every year, they'll look to their current content teachers to help them decide what the best fit for their next class is. So if I'm a junior this year, when I got my scheduling form, I would go to my current math teacher, which was probably geometry, and they would actually physically put a stamp on the scheduling form that they approved a certain class. Um, so we do that in all of the content areas, the core content areas. We don't have students have to get um, recommendations for most of our electives unless it's an advanced elective class like a, a, a business class or something like that. Um, but yes, students will continue to need to get recommendations for their classes. And the idea with that is just to make sure that they're in um, the best fit. We want them all to be academically successful and to have a combination of something that they can do, but yet is pushing them academically. Mrs. Ferguson, is there a list of clubs on our website, do you know? The question is, is there a list of clubs on our website? There is, um, but exactly where, I don't know. So what we'll do is I'll talk with um, Mrs. McMahon, who is in charge of our clubs and activities. And I actually think she's out there watching tonight because she also has an eighth grader. Um, and we will make sure that we put that on the guidance webpage as well. Um, our clubs have obviously looked a little different um, this year than, in the, than they have in the past because we haven't been able to have big group gatherings. Um, but hopefully next year we'll be able to get back to those. Um, question, can a student take honors? Can they take the physics? Um, if you have, that's a real specific question, and we will get with Mr. Short, who is our um, assistant principal who works with the science department. And that's another thing to kind of explain how the high school works. Um, each of us that are assistant principals work with specific academic um, departments. Um, as I said, I work with the guidance department, special education. Edu guidance, special education, art, and music. Mrs. McMahon works with the early college program, but also English. Mr. Short works with math and science, and Mrs. Perkin works with social studies, world language, um, facts, and business. And then our deans also help out with some business and some um, PE classes. So if you ever have a specific question, you're welcome to send them to me, and I am happy to filter them out to the assistant principal that can best um, answer your question. Your guidance counselors can also do that. So please don't hesitate to ask the question to some of us and we will make sure that it gets to the right person. Um, we all have voicemail that we're happy to answer and all of our emails are available on the school website as well. Okay, well, what I think we'll do is we will stay and answer your questions online. Um, so if you still have a question that hasn't been answered yet, I would suggest that you still stay on and we will keep doing that. Um, 
but we don't want to take up everyone's time if there's something that, um, you know, you already have your answer. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, we had a great turnout and we're super excited about the class of 2025 coming to Center Grove High School. And once again, anytime you have a question, let us know. Um, there's no way that this is going to get mess up their whole four-year career on this one schedule. Um, so don't stress about it. Um, we're all in this together and we're here to help. So with that, have a good evening and we'll keep typing away on answering those questions. Thank you.